This is the abandoned Queen Mary's Hospital and let's go urban exploring. So then, the main part of Queen Mary's Hospital is not actually abandoned, not actually had lift or here a few years ago. But if we go up to the top end of the site, there is this abandoned building. And looking at this building from the front, it looks really secure and no chance of really getting into it. But if we go around the back of this building, what is really odd is that this site is in use. It's an NHS site, the hospital's still open, it's this one building is abandoned. So we'd expect them to like board it completely up, make it really secure. But no, the way into this building everyone's been going in it's like glaring obvious this way this is the way into the building really odd there's no house expecting around the back here and this is so obvious that everyone's just been going in through this window so then let's now climb in through this window and go into this abandoned building and i am in the ward wow quite weird seeing this abandoned ward it's very derelict in here very spooky very grotty and this here's one of the patient rooms no bed everything's been removed but you can still very clearly see uh, this is a patient room This place is so spooky, so weird to see this old ward all run down and derelict like this. Really fun. There's so much to it. It's all so abandoned. It's quite a big glass here, so I'll just quickly get through this bit so no one can see I'm in this building. But I don't think anyone would really care if I did see, actually. So now we go through this bit to the x-ray department. And just look at these x-ray signs. And in this room through this big leaded door to stop all the x-rays getting out, there is the x-ray room. Sadly, no x-ray machine in here anymore. That's been removed. That's a shame. I'd like to turn it on. But even if there was an x-ray machine here, I wouldn't be able to turn it on since all the power's off. That's a shame. I'd really like to have a go turning on an x-ray machine. Really creepy this building is. And if we go through here, this is one of the toilets and has been smashed. In fact, every single toilet in this abandoned building has been broken. It's like some mad, crazy toilet smasher has been around this abandoned building, smashing up every toilet. How weird. Why would someone want to just randomly go around the abandoned building, smashing up the toilets? Very odd. So now let's go this way and there's still loads of white stuff on the floor which is quite worrying. Especially I'm walking across it and if it is asbestos that wouldn't be good. As far as I can tell it isn't. I'm looking at it as white stuff. All of it doesn't appear to be asbestos. It's like shining around the hostel, bits of ceiling tile, bits of plaster off the wall. And long we go to this staircase. So then up this staircase I go very spooky up to the first floor. And along we go into another bit of ward. Very abandoned. Let's take a look around here. And one of the really interesting things about this hostel is all of the signs around the place all look very 80s. Awesome. Sadly, lots of the 80s bits of hostels are sadly being removed now. Days which is a real loss, really. Wow. This, actually, this building actually probably looks loads better being abandoned. When it was in use, it was probably a bit boring. But now it's abandoned. It's really fun. So let's go up here. And quite dark in this bit. And along we go to the lifts. Spooky. And the lift doors are in fact actually open. So someone's been here before me and opened up the lift doors. And up here you can look down on top of the lifts. And if you look at the lift button, it looks like a very typical 70s, 80s style generic button. And these lifts do look really old. Really spooky. So let's come on looking around this abandoned building and it's quite dark. Very spooky. Spooky. There's a lot of rubble on the floor and a bit worried. It looks a bit like asbestos. But if we look closely, we can actually see this is actually just the tiles from a fake ceiling. And even though they're white on the outside, if you look closely, they're actually just chipboard. They're just wooden sort of, just like wooden fireboard on the inside. So not actually dangerous, but you do have to look when you go around these buildings. So there is quite a high risk of asbestos. And through here there is another smashed toilet.
And now along we go to this bit where there is a ladder going upwards. So then, up we go, and here I am up on the service area. Loads of pigeons flapping about. They all look very surprised to see me up here, and it is really creepy up here, so spooky. And along we go to the motor room. Danger of machinery will start without warning. Yeah, definitely so going to start now the power's turned off. So in the motor room we go, and just look at these awesome bull motors. They tip off like 50s, 60s, 70s, but there was a bit of a confusion in this motor room as the gearing on these lift motors is made by Janey Hall, which is really awesome as you don't find that much Janey Hall stuff nowadays. But Janey Hall stopped making lifts in 1968. Basically, pretty much the whole of the Janey Hall company pretty much disappeared apart from one small section which still exists today, but the whole large engineering company just sort of disappeared around 1968. I don't know if they did still make lift gears for a bit later after that, I don't know, but it's a bit of a mix up on dates because the logic is Thames Valley controls, generic logic, semi relay controlled so it's actually quite an old type of genetic logic unlike genetic logic you get nowadays which is just like your box and a load of crap and Thames Valley Control started in 1970 so the dates here don't quite match up either these were like really old sort of like Janie Hall lifts built in like the 60s then they were modernised towards like the late 70s but would be a bit soon for modernisation especially from like a large heavy engineering company like Janie Hall their lifts wouldn't be modernising that quick you still get Janie Hall lifts working today like real big heavy duty lifts very weird this is it's like sort of mix of different parts that don't quite match up in date. I'm not sure if these lifts were like modernised in like late 70s, early 80s, or whether these are completely original. I really don't know. Because as I say, the dates don't quite match up. Quite odd. So then, let's look around this motor room. And there's quite a few parts on the floor. This is where I kept their spare parts. And here's the Thames Valley Control, semi-relay control. So the main functions of the lift still use relays. But for some of the logic features, I actually use what was then the new technology, which was PIC computers. They're like logic circuit boards doing some of the more processing, sort of more sort of advanced function sorts of things. Quite odd, they've got so many circuits was this because this looks like a modular sort of design but since there's only two lifts here they just go between two floors why would they've got all these logic circuit boards especially from the 70s when still a lot of companies back end were still just making like complete just plain relay controls rather than semi relay control and here is the ball motor very interesting side of motor this is and one of the best things about these motors they are really large heavy duty very different like modern day stuff because modern day generic stuff so crap and doesn't last long at all technically speaking you could say ball motors were like a generic lift motor provider since they were providing motors to other lift companies but they weren't the slightest bit generic at all like you'd think of generic nowadays because ball motors are so large heavy duty and long lasting Sadly, there's no date on this motor. Really annoying. Companies should always put dates on stuff. It's really useful. And I just really like ball motors. It's like massive, great big motor. And one very interesting thing is it says super start. Now this is interesting because ball motors are usually like little single speed and really awesome. They're like glue when they start. Really awesome sound. But there is the other sort of ball motor which makes a very classic sound like boo boo. And this sort of motor you hear on often Benny lifts, Marit Scott lifts, Owen K lifts, and on Evans's two speed lifts, not on their single speed lifts, because Evans used their own motor on single speed lifts, but on their two speed lifts they used ball motors. And this sort of super start motor, you do hear it quite a lot, it's a really awesome sound. And it's like a really old fashioned mechanical way of switching the frequency round. Basically, what it is, it's like a phase shift sort of switching round the coils in the motor to, to sort of like create different speeds of a rotating magnetic field from the incoming power supply sort of thing. Because back then you did not get transistor controls or making variable frequency. Transistor controls of switching large power supplies started in the 80s, but only DC. The AC systems didn't come until the 90s. And now we go out of the motor room and along to the air conditioning motor room. Lots of interesting stuff here, but I can't really tell you that much about this because I don't really know that much about air conditioning. I know there's quite a lot of air conditioning enthusiasts out on the internet. Here's the large motors for air conditioning, which are really large and look really interesting. And if we go over here, we can go out onto the roof. Yes, I've got onto the roof. And that is pretty much the end of the video. So then, if any of you out there know where there's a abandoned building where I could exploit, please tell me so I really want to get into some more abandoned buildings.